Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Adam Burrow, not Chris Beard or Mike Jones. Um, oh, thank you so much. This is my assistant, Nate Beard. Give him a round of applause, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. OK, hey. <laughs> so one late night, I was driving home from an extensive day of work at Sonic, 12 hours flipping burgers, mopping up grease. Yes, wonderful. It was late at night, and I had decided to take the back roads home because I thought it would be easier, and I thought it would be quicker. No, <laughs> it was not. So I was driving, and everything was fine, but apparently not because I had no idea where I was at. I was looking at unfamiliar territory. I remember I was coming up along a curve, and I was like, huh, I don't usually go here. And then I was like, oh, well. And so I just kept driving. Um, but still, I was lost. So I was like, no big deal. I'll just pull up my GPS on my phone. That's what I was thinking before I pulled out my dead phone. Um, so 10.30 at night. No, not 10.30. It was like midnight. Um, lost. Nothing to guide me back home. If you would, open to Matthew 14, verse 22. Uh, now, just as some context, this is after Jesus had fed the 5,000 people. Matthew 14, verse 22. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. Now, let's... Let's talk about that real fast. Let's take a moment to pause. Um, so he went up by himself, alone. It says it two times, so it must be important, right? I mean, if I had fed 5,000 people, I'd want to be alone too, but that's not why he was there, of course. He went up to pray. Now, I know we push community a lot in this church, but sometimes when we really need to talk with God and have a conversation, it's okay to be alone in a moment of Selah. So back at CIY, we had this time almost every day to ourselves. It was called Selah. This was a time we had about an hour, essentially, to have a spiritual conversation. But the significance of this was that we were by ourselves, just like Jesus was after feeding 5,000 people. Continuing on with verse 24. Verse 24 says, And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Think about those words, because there's more to it than what it seems. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Now, there's a lot to dissect, to dissect in that passage, but today we're going to be focusing on three main points. First one is, take courage. If you would, flip to John 16, verse 33. 16, verse 33, book of John. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but, listen to this, but, Take heart, I have overcome the world. Do you see the parallels here? Take courage, take heart. Obviously, if it's said more than once, it's pretty important. So here, it shows that Jesus is aware that we are going to make mistakes. Heck, he expects us to make mistakes. We're human. Anyways, we all know that. But also take a look at Joshua 1, verse 7 through 9. Joshua 1, verse 7. Be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be wherever, with you wherever you go. Be, be, do not keep, 
B, do not, do not, seven. All of these are commanding words, so they are very crucial. Be strong and courageous. To me, this is as crucial as you shall have no other gods before me, or you shall have no idols, or even you shall not murder. They are commandments, and to me, be strong and courageous is as much of a commandment as those are. So why disobey it sometimes? Take courage. The dictionary defines courage as strength in the face of pain or grief. Do you know those movies where a kid has a bully? Well, most of these movies, it ends up with the bully bullied being stood up, standing up to the bully. Now it's a movie, so usually the bullied kid walks away like a boss, but then the bully is like, what just happened? And he's like all shocked. But the bullied kid also knows that there is a chance that he might get hurt, beat up, or whatever. However, he stands up for what he thinks is right, and that is true courage. That is the definition of taking heart. Winston Churchill once said that success is never final and failure never fatal. It's courage that counts. Now, I know that Churchill isn't Jesus, but still, what a brilliant man. There's a reason they called him the lion, huh, Miss Beard? Where are you at? Miss Beard, is she in here? No? Okay. She was my history teacher. She taught me that. Um, but yeah, have courage. Success is never final. So there's no reason we should stop trying to be successful. There's no reason we should stop trying to be successful and the things that we do. And failure is never fatal. I thought that was true. Or no, I thought failure was fatal for such a long time until I looked at this passage. Um, failure is never fatal. You're not going to die. It's not the end if you fail. We are going to fail. You're going to fail more times than you succeed. At CIY, there was this girl that um, she brought disciples into the church, and that was her job, basically. She just brought new people into the church from her high school. And she said that she had more no's than yeses, like 100 no's to one yes. But still, those yeses still count. Jesus came to them and said, have courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. I feel like this line is look, overlooked so many times. When Jesus sees the fear in the disciples, he not only tells them to have courage, but he commands it. We live in fear, whether that fear is, oh, what if I'm not good enough, or what if I'm not pretty enough, or what if I get laughed at? Oh, I won't fit in. We need to get those fears and get past them. Because in the end, no matter how we do it, as long as we serve how Jesus intended, we will see the wonderful, magnificent gates of heaven. The second point, Peter asking to come on the water. Now, Peter was a fisherman, and as we can imagine, he's lost some acquaintances, some men, and even some close friends. So when it says that Peter saw the wind and became afraid, maybe, maybe Peter saw the wind and was reminded of those men that he had lost and all of those dangerous, scary moments. As you can see, Peter was the one who wanted to walk out on the water. He put himself in that situation. I feel like all of us can relate to this, put our, putting ourselves in the middle of the storm, you know? However, when we do put ourselves in those dangerous situations, God is still faithful to rescue us and pull us out. And the third and final point is, we need to take courage, but we need to take courage in Jesus. Not ourselves, but in Jesus. In Matthew, the main point is still Jesus' miracle in front of the disciples. However, we get to see how the disciples, or specifically Peter, play a part in this story. Jesus approaches the disciples, who are still in the boat. Then after realizing it's Jesus, Peter asks if he can, to, if he can walk too on the water. Jesus says, come. I, th I think that's funny, too. So, G <laughs> Peter is like, I see Jesus as, like, the dad and Peter being the kid, and the kid seeing something, doing, sees the dad doing something, like, really cool. And he's like, dad, I want to do that. Can I do that? Can I do that? And he's just being really annoying, and he's like, can I come on the water? And Jesus is like, all right, okay, fine, just come on. <laughs> and then, um, but, yeah, Jesus says, come. So Peter makes his way out of the boat and starts to walk on the water, but then he becomes afraid. 
While he's sinking, he's like, whoa, whoa, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me. And he starts freaking out. Then Jesus reaches out and says, why did you doubt? This recollection in the book of Matthew focuses more on Jesus' miracle, while at the same time focusing on how if we don't take courage, we will sink. Matthew 14, verse 30. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Verse 32 says, and they climbed into the boat. The wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. After a little while of driving, I was still freaking out. I was even considering going door to door, knocking on people's doors at midnight. Just imagine being lost, your phone is dead, you have no map, you don't have a clue where you are, you're helpless. But maybe not. In all of my fear, I was ready to give up. But out of nowhere, I see headlights. I start honking, desperately trying to get attention. I slam on the brakes, throw the car in park, and I get out of the car and start jumping up and down, trying to get attention. He passes like any sane person would, because let's be honest, would you stop in that situation? I would not. Um, (laughs) Anyways, I hurry back in my car and I follow them. Then I see the turn that I missed. In that moment, I was ready to give up, but I literally saw a beaming light and I grabbed on. If it wasn't for that truck, I would have slept in my car that night. Our focus needs to be on taking courage in Jesus rather than ourselves. If you have not listened to anything that I say, listen to that. It is taking courage in Jesus, not ourselves, because that is the main problem with today's society. We think we got this on our own, but we don't. We really don't. (laughs) It's a community. It's a community effort, and we're about to see a lot of that. We have seen that in Harvey, and we're about to see a lot more of that in Imelda. Um... Don't get mad at me, but in my opinion, I think Amelda is the ultimate test to see how we will react in this situation. How we will recover, how we re- how, if we will put our heads down or keep them up. Um, I went to go help out some um, one house yesterday. It was Oh my gosh, it was crazy. I didn't even know Beaumont flooded because Beaumont didn't really flood that bad during Harvey. But we went to those house, that neighborhood, and like every house just had trash out in front. And I was like, that's crazy. It wasn't even as bad as I thought. It wasn't like, it was worse than I thought. But just seeing the community of people come together and work on that house, it was really warming. And the owners was like, yeah, it's a roller coaster of emotions. He was laughing while he said it. Oh my gosh, it was insane. But in this moment in time, we need to take courage in Jesus rather than ourselves. So as Joe comes up here, think about that and just think of how we are going to react in this situation. Pray with me. Lord, I thank you for speaking through me into this audience today. I thank you for just everyone showing up here. I pray that you help us give courage and just take heart. Let us be the bullied that stands up to Satan and says, no, I will take courage in Jesus, not you. I will take courage in Jesus, not myself. Lord, I pray for the victims of Imelda as well. I pray that you just rest their hearts, Lord, rest their emotions because it's a hard time right now. And yes, it is very hard, but this is a moment where we can see if this is the moment like we were put our head down or keep it up. So as we go home today, just let us focus on that, Lord, and taking courage in you rather than ourselves. It's your holy, most precious name I pray. Amen. Let's stand as we close.